The Battle of the River taking place in uh, Davenport, Iowa at St. Ambrose's campus. Right now in favor of Augustana, they made the trek across the Mississippi River and are currently sitting on match point with a 2-0 lead. And Old Man River is favoring them tonight, at least as far as this has gone. And you and I here were talking in the break, right? This is a LAN. It's being played at St. Ambrose's eSports facility, which is really cool. Um, you know, we, we heard that they had a crowd there. I think I already mentioned that. That's awesome. Hopefully they got pizza and stuff during the break. That's great. Uh, get as much out of that as you can. But I think that it's uh, I think that it's something that might be affecting their play just a little bit. And I obviously I don't know, right? We're, we're kind of, you know, projecting onto this a little bit. But I do wonder, there's just been such, so many small mistakes coming out of the side of St. Ambrose. I, I do kind of have to ask, is the nervousness of playing in front of a crowd on your home turf in a land like it's a rivalry match? Is that all maybe contributing to a little bit of a, a misplays at critical moments? Quite possibly. I mean, the energy is very different in a land and maybe mm -hmm. Augustana are just a land kind of team. Maybe where St. Ambrose is feeling a little pressure, Augustana is feeling a little bolstered. Uh, and, and we did talk about, I mean, Coach Loomis was was speaking on the importance of controlling emotions and that focus so far, like they do not look uh, off their game at all. In fact, Augustana look as good as I have seen them all season long uh, playing at the land. Shout out to anybody in Devonport, Iowa watching this right now. If you have pictures of the land, uh, tag me on Twitter. I want to see this. I want to see this facility. I want to see the action. But anyway, that's beside the point. Speaking of action, we got map three coming up. St. Ambrose, uh, they got to, they're going to have to reverse sweep this thing, Corbeck. They are going to have to reverse sweep this thing, and we are going to SA or we are going to uh, Route 66 here. SAU starting on the defense, and that might be a little bit of an advantage for them. I think if you're trying to steady a ship in a storm, uh, in terms of Overwatch, I do think defense is the place where you want to be because it gives you an opportunity to coordinate before the round. You kind of get there ahead of the other team. Uh, you're in a more reactive position, which I, I think is genuinely better for sort of calming nerves than having to make decisions, having to be super proactive uh that said i mean augustana college their attacks have been blistering they're coming out here on a double bubble they've got a flyer in the mix as well i just don't see them slowing down in the tempo that they've been bringing and i i just you know as this continues to go as these long fights continue to boil i'm just not sure that saint ambrose is going to be able to match that tempo when push comes to shove well, augustana Right now, taking it slow and steady. This is a little bit slower composition than the other two we've seen with kind of the dive poke hybrid that is double bubble. Very much looking to build up that nano boost in this first 45 to 60 seconds. Anything under 60 seconds is considered a great time. Uh, is, uh, unfortunately, my feed has, has got a little great. There we go. We're right back into it. No worries, friends. Apologies for the technical issues. Happens to the best of us. Uh, but through this, uh, well, we saw Weezer go down early, and Harveckle doesn't have a whole lot of ult charge to speak of here early so the double shield defense doing their job thus far yeah, unfortunately, we're, we are having some feed issues, so we can't necessarily uh, make out too much here. Just a desperate gas from Winston right there, which is something you never want to hear. Uh, and then a, a gray screen on the backside of that. And it does wait, look like St. Ambrose. I'm not sure who <laughs> wait, won. <what? laughs> I will tell you one thing, though, Bullskunk. Agent MM7 here is an absolute danger on this tracer and has been kind of dominant. Uh, actually on this DPS from what we did see of that last fight engaged Weezer immediately got the kill is 50% ahead of their opposite number in terms of ult charge has the pulse bomb in the tank and looks like they were doing a little bit of cleanup duty there for Augustana or against Augustana as well so a good start Weezer really needs to step up and try and contain uh, their their kind of evil twin here. They have the captain, uh, St. Ambrose, Agent MM7 on your screen right now, looking for this pulse, has the supports oh, in sight. Whoa, oh, it looked no. like a boop just at the wrong time, uh, perhaps out of the brig. Uh, but the, the pulse bomb does go wide. Back on the front lines, Brennan Man is raging. That is a primaling monkey uh, trying to target whomever they can find. Looks like they settled on supports, perhaps turning on to Heinz, who does have a duplicate ready to go. And looking for any kind of purchase to try to push this thing forward. But St. Ambrose doing a good job of just bending but not breaking. They back up around the corner now re-engaging with that duplicate and that self-destruct that was able to open up the back end of this fight. Hines is pestering Harveckle, who's in a lot of trouble here. And with that on a falling, that is going to be another hold here for St. Ambrose. 
Oh, Agent M7 was robbed of a big pulse bomb player right there, but they made up for it in the tail end of that fight. They're about to hit another pulse bomb here as well. Um, and we'll go back to the theme of ults, and really it's been St. Ambrose who have been the dominant ult user so far in this fight. Again, the DPS in particular are the ones that I'm looking at here for Augustana, particularly Weezer, needs to step up. Unlike the later albums of Weezer, they need to actually live up to expectations in this fight. Razor right now, not marking MM7 at all. Who's able to work around into the back, but Vanilla Big Hug is there. Protect Harveckle and support ults coming online directly here for Augustana. It's going to be the Nana Boots going on to Brennan Man, who's going up onto the high ground, just trying to get a lot of cleave in while Weezer tries to work around from the outside. Supercharger is dealt with, and Brennan Man hands it to the back. There was an Ant Matrix de deployed there from St. Ambrose, but Augustana's already behind you. They've already cracked through your lines. All right. Just going to point out how much of a different fight that was when they lost Agent MM7 on the back line. Once that source of pressure that was being applied to the backside to the rear of the Augustana College formation was gone, it felt like they could breathe again. It felt like they could orchestrate the attack that they wanted. Everybody was closing in. There was less pressure to defend Harvicle. They got mixed up. You saw the brig come forward. Complete tone shift in that attack right there. Brennan Man, by the way, forced to might have even misclicked on the primal. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but unfortunate to see that ult go in such an ineffective manner. Yeah, I think I was just trying to give us some motion sickness there. I was clearly frustrated <laughs> with that with that ult. Uh, that's that's the only thing that could mean. Uh, MM7 does have this pulse. We'll see if they can coordinate a little bit better with Ark's uh, halt this time around. Lands it in just before the stun comes out. A split second difference means life or death for Vanilla Hip, for Vanilla Big Hug. And unfortunately, it's the latter. Now with a bit of an advantage, Weezer Ooh. strikes back stronger, finds both supports. And it is Weezer winning out the Pulse Bomb duel, now just living rent-free in the heads of the Fighting Bees. This is exactly what they needed from Weezer. That couldn't have been any better timed. You're, you're down your kind of linchpin support, right? The Ana is obviously the main heal here. It has a bunch of util that she can contribute to the fights, but the Brig is the one who's keeping the Ana alive. She's the centerpiece of the support line and the formation as a whole. Great effort right there by Weezer to get their team out of a very difficult situation. And now St. Ambrose is forced to backpedal yet again. They've got the alt advantage. Is it going to be enough here for them to turn around this fight and get a stop at this first corner which would be huge with the time banks remaining i think they're just gonna wait for august to engage and then throw down their ant matrix and drop this duplicate while they're at it uh it's gonna be the winston that was duplicated with the self-destruct into the back three takes turns out it's pretty good uh, and Augustana have been forced all the way back outside the double doors. Superb trying to stay alive with all that charge down low uses the bubble and somehow still alive and kicking back there Three tanks, huh? That's that sounds interesting. They should try that. Maybe pair yeah, it somebody with should make supports. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> How's somebody thought of this Corbett? Oh, I don't know. We're on the cutting edge here, Bullskunk. And speaking of the cutting edge, they're already going in again. Oh, and there's a huge bio nade from Harveckle. But somehow it, it doesn't matter. St. Ambrose is able to survive. They didn't even use any support ults to do it. I think just a beautiful immortality field was enough to allow the room for St. Ambrose to strike back. Oh, I mean, it was a good play there from St. Ambrose to recover again from a very dangerous situation, and they used their ults well there. They didn't have to put a ton into it. Interesting, Synfax has held on to the Amplification Matrix here, which is probably the fastest ult to regenerate on their side. It's got to come out at some point in time, but it's going to be the rallies coming out respectively as that comes down the pipe. In fact, uh, Synfax is going to go ahead and throw down that Ant Matrix at this point with Bread and Man primally in the back. They're trying to keep the rest of Augustana at bay while they deal with this high HP Winston that is pressuring their back line. But St. Ambrose is able to survive the onslaught and, and now looking to try to punch back as Self Destruct thrown in. I anticipated Hines would follow that in with the dupe, but reads the flank as Augustana tries to come through mini room and go around. Brennan Man heads in the back, hoping Harvick will get the nano, but it's not in time. Now Hines chooses to dupe, using it as a counterpunch method, drops the primal rage, has superb in a corner. Hines coming up with a big play here on the defense. 
We know Heinz is capable of it. We saw moments of it over on the other side. Did a really good job uh, of stepping into that one. Now switching over to what I think might be, you know, their, their maybe favorite DPS or at least a comfort DPS in a lot of ways, which is that Cassidy. They showed deadly effect with Cassidy last time we saw it on King's Row. It's the kind of fight ender they need. They've also got the pulse bomb in the pocket. MM7 needs to hit it and needs to hit it big and won't find it, Bull Skunk, an unfortunate start. No, and now there's a grab with a nano monkey into it, and we're telling Phil's taken care of, and Brennan Man just lands on top of everybody. Now pops their ultimate to go in and clean up what remains of St. Ambrose defense. Augustana, it took them until the very, very end, but they will push this thing home, clean up a little bit of stall. Tracer comes out. HMM7 won't last long, and Augustana finally get this third point on the board. Something so typically Augustana, at least the Augustana that we've seen tonight right there. Great ult combination. Perfect heads up play from the off tank. Saw the nano, uh, you know, Winston come charging in. Superb watches that go forward and knows that if there is ever a time where they're going to use that Graviton Surge, it has to be right then and there. Sticks it perfectly. That allows cleave damage. Then Superb themselves comes crashing in on the backside of the cleave damage brilliantly executed finish now i will say it was a very good defense from st ambrose better than what we saw in king's row they burned them down all the way into overtime they should be very happy with that but they have to be kicking themselves a little bit that they weren't able to stop it at the very tail end and it was because the critical ult that they needed a really good pulse bomb to start things off did not come to fruition there for whatever reason and MM7 started off so good on the Tracer, but I think as time went on, it was Weezer yeah. who kind of started to uh, to eclipse a little bit. Uh, you know, coming through, I mean, it was the, the Pulse Bomb engagement where MM7 picks up one, Weezer's able to get both supports. Like, I felt like that was the turning point to where Weezer kind of started to have more and more impact in that role. Yeah. It felt like the turning point of the entire attack, to be honest, because yeah, up until that point in time, I mean, it really looked like they weren't going to finish that second point. They were getting sort of stalled out. They had just burned an ult on what I can only assume was the fat finger. It was a mistake, whatever it was. Uh, and then that pulse bomb comes in from Weezer and suddenly they've, they've got life breathed into their sails. And St. Ambrose, I mean, they did a great job. They slowed him down. It just wasn't enough at the tail end. Now they're on the attack. They get to deliver it back the other way. I'm curious to see how this diva sort of uh tank line holds up here arista diva is a difficult combination to really make work we see vanilla big hug there doing a bit of backline guard duty making sure that agent mm7 is a little bit more contained on this first point than last time and mm7 yeah just content to sit on cart knowing that uh, doesn't want to get too close in there. A lot of criticals on your screen right now. Augustana falling back, but they've lost their primary source of healing. And St. Ambrose are able to jump up there, utilizing the cart. And Augustana start going by the wayside. St. Ambrose with a great start. Oh boy, I tell you what, St. Ambrose drilled the hole there and just put everything they had into it. Unfortunate to have lost Harvicle first, but a really good capitalization there on the side of St. Ambrose to really make that stick. Uh, interestingly, superb here, kind of on the double shield. I'm not feeling a lot of impact from the Sigma shield right now. It seems to be getting taken down in a relatively quick fashion. They really can't seem to sustain it very well on the defensive side. Which means it's got to be used very purposefully oh nice play from mm7 just before vanilla big hug comes through able to sneak around the bodyguard and find their assassination target now trying to find something with the pulse but harbeckle and vanilla big hug had had enough of mm7 shenanigans in the back as they're able to equalize 5v5 both teams missing a dps and heinz going to use a sigma and try to turn the dutch scientist against augustana and their defense already has that gravitic flux ready to go doesn't have much life left in this duplicate has to play it a bit safe but might open things up the other way superb trying to respond with the authentic gravitic flux slams down azur rose forces out immortality field but now the Transcendence is ready. He's going to save everybody but MM7. Supercharger out. The War Drums on the battlefield from both teams, as a matter of fact. And this is about to get real bloody. Reezer could be the difference maker here. Has the Dragons at just that infinite amount of damage available to a Hanzo. Just putting it down to St. Ambrose as they look to turn this corner. Finally, lets the Dragons go over the objective. And St. Ambrose just back it up a little bit. 
It's a classic long fight from these two teams. Neither one of them wanting to give an inch of ground. MM7 there taking advantage of the terrain to be a constant nuisance. But here comes the St. Ambrose breakthrough. Ooh. The crack that they are starting to push open. And finally, Ooh. Azure Rose coming online there. Three kills for the Zenyatta. Has been relatively quiet up until now in the push there, Bullskunk. But coming through big uh, exactly when they needed to. And now five minutes to attack this last point is more than enough time, in my opinion, for St. Ambrose to walk this one in. Oh man, the longer these fights goes on, the, the more and more value Azure Rose is going to find with this Zenyatta. And not only three picks, but manages to find both supports in that. Now Sinfax has an Ant Matrix up, so Azure Rose is doing that much more damage. Just sitting back here and putting in a world of hurt. It forces Augustana way back. It does, and Agent M7 playing those flanks. Now the Amplification Matrix coming out on the front line as well. The big issues here, both of the DPS alts and the Transcendence about to come online for St. Ambrose. There is no real answer to this on the side of Augustana. They need to get the dragons as quickly as possible and use it as quickly as possible to level the boards before these alts start to go off. And even just a kill in the neutral might do it. Transcendence is forced out by those dragons from Weezer, and now the big Omnic Butler is put onto the objective. This allows a little breathing room for the tanks. As the Pulse Bomb yeeted into the back, MM790 will pick up one on this, but back on the front line, Sinfax has whittled through the front line of Augustana, and St. Ambrose on track to put up a wicked fast time. Augustana coming back, they might have a rally, but this is gonna be, this is gonna be close. Vanilla Big Hug can't go him. down. Vanilla Big Hug is down. That's it. It's done. Dusted. That is a, wow. uh, well, a pretty mammoth time bank, if I do say so. Downright gargantuan, Corbeck. Oh, St. Ambrose with the bite and hold right there. They ain't giving this one up that easily. Uh, they found their center right there, for lack of a better word. Four minutes, 36 seconds in the time bank. That is a uh, that is a hefty bank there for uh, Route 66. You don't see a lot of teams putting in something over four minutes, to be honest. You rarely see teams putting in stuff over three minutes, all things considered. What were the key points that made them succeed on that push? I think they had really good aggression. They had pretty good ult usage. I think they were doing a lot better with their ult that time than they had been in the past and i think that their synergy looked a little bit better as well things were falling into place a little bit more and ultimately and i'm gonna point it out again they really struggled to shut down mm7 that time around it was not as contained the tracer maintained a huge presence in those fights throughout doing exactly what they needed to do harassing getting kills pressuring the supports not letting anyone have a minute to rest and those are the critical critical factors that allow saint amber to push forward there oh and if you let mm7 just run rampant it's you're gonna have a bad time uh augustana have to find a way to control not only mm7 but Heinz as well uh, otherwise they don't even stand a chance here already with a huge deficit in the time bank only way to overcome that put some points on the board if they can get four maybe even five points suddenly that time bank won't mean all that much but again it starts with shutting down these two just high powered dps from san ambrose yeah, it's true. But again, look, MM7 already in the position to be a nuisance. So this is going to require Augustana to basically have a constant spy on this tracer if they want to prevent what's been happening. Good dive in, though, to start him off. Unfortunately, Brendan Man just cannot maintain that position. Yeah, I think just trying to get some uh, some bolt charge for Harbeckle. Uh, you, you get those initial pokes here with the double bubble. But St. Ambrose looked like they want to strike back. MM7 is under some pressure, managed to pick up that Mega, if I saw correctly, while Weezer is trying to work the back line as well. Both Tracers uh, just ignoring each other and trying to see who can kill the other's back line first. And, well, it's a nice halt into some Sticky Bombs, and Hines is able to find the kill in the main tank, but Augustana returned the favor, now have a plus one in this fight. Dad trying to burn down Sindrion, who is super low, but the overtime wick is going. Augustana, they can't get aggressive. They are forced to keep their feet on this cart. And again, Weezer with a big pick right there, not letting up on this fight is superb. Finally comes crashing in. That's a good start for Augustana. Look at it. Superb looking like they bathe in nuclear waste right there, glowing with power as they push their way forward. But uh, they've got no time to play with here, Bullskunk. This is everything in overtime from here on out. Every inch of every meter, I guess I should say, of territory that they win here is a bonus. Something that they're going to have to earn. It's interesting how the overtime kind of changes the way you play, though. Yeah, Brenneman wants to get aggressive. They have a nano boost, but they have to stay in LOS of Harvekel. 
uh, that Harbeckel cannot get off the cart. If Harbeckel dies, Augustana are in trouble, but they do get that nano boost out. Immediate kill onto the supports, and St. Ambrose struggling to find footing here, trying to use an Ant Matrix to do it, but Brennaban just works right past it. Punches Synfax into oblivion. Now looking for more onto Hines, who's looking very wounded in that back line, but the focusing being too strong. Dad strikes back, and Augustana certainly, uh, they're running out of reinforcements here and running out of time. I was well, just thinking to time. myself that yeah. they are out of time. I was just thinking to myself that entire fight pulls Kunk too far, too far, too far. Brennan Man really went in too deep with the Primal, and that might actually cost him the rest of this push because they are down there, Winston, in this re engage. It is a Graviton Surge coming out, and Weezer's able to get one. Dad's able to get one. Now Brennan Man has returned to the fight, and it's same Ambrose who were looking worse for wear. Heinz tries to duplicate the Zarya, but it's so tough to get that Graviton Surge up because you don't have any charge to work with as a dupe. And holy cow, Augustana, despite uh, the odds being stacked against them in this engagement, they're going to put five points on the board. Suddenly that time difference is gone. That's not even a concern for St. Ambrose anymore. They're not looking at the time disparagement. They're looking at those five points. They are looking at those five points because honestly, four minutes, 36 seconds, some teams could take that entire time bank and burn that on point number one. Let's be honest with ourselves right here. They were fortunate that they were able to turn that fight around without breaded man. Now they have to worry about the amplification matrix and the beatdown bongos coming out of arc. Either of those ults could be a bit of a fight turner here if they're combined together. That's going to be really, really dangerous, uh, all things considered. They've also got, a, you know, a pulse bomb coming online here, too, but the bongos will start. Yep, Supercharger out, a rally not far behind, a lot for Augustana to weather, and they're going to use a nano boost to do that onto Breaded Man. You can see Breaded Man not getting as aggressive this time, but a great pulse as MMSM steps up. Huge bio nade comes out of Harvekel, a dying wish, but the follow-up is just not quite there. Augustana can't work past the double damage from Synfax Amplification Matrix, and St. Ambrose have finally put the brakes on this thing. Weezer going to try till their last breath to work what they can, but Augustana fighting a very uphill battle, not even Superb's Graviton Surge will be enough, I say that as Rose goes down, Hines finally eliminates Superb from the battlefield, Brennan Man shows back up on the Wrecking Ball trying to get some work done, and Augustana are finding a kill here and there, but they need a lot more to keep this cart moving, it's just a Lucio and a Wrecking Ball left with Harvacle in the far back trying to keep them topped up, but St. Ambrose, they're not getting these picks, Corbeck! No, they're not. I mean, MM7 was doing a good job interdicting right there, but it's not enough. Finally, they get Vanilla Big Hug down. They've got to do more. They've got a Bob. He's finally in the fight as well. And here we go. The kill's starting Ooh. to tick in favor. Heinz is Bob doing some big work right there. And I'm just going to say this before I turn it over to you, Bullskunk. That could have happened like uh, 30 to 40 seconds ago. Heinz died with the Bob in that critical fight. If Bob had been thrown right around the time that Heinz was starting to die, uh, I think we would have seen the fight end right there. Instead, it takes a little bit longer. It doesn't really matter in the long run of things, I guess, because the distance was about the same, but just an interesting little bit of decision making there on the side of the St. Ambrose DPS. It made me sweat. I'll tell you what. Because <laughs> that was that was starting to look like Augustana could turn that thing a little around. spicy. Little if spicy. they installed that out just a little bit longer, reinforcements were going to show up. Uh, fortunately for San Ambrose, they have the ults to hold on. Uh, the, the supercharger uh, coming in clutch there at the end alongside Heinz as Bob. But they still have quite a hill to climb here. This is That was a heck of a push for overtime. It was. It was a very strong overtime push, and I don't want to. I don't want to lose sight of that, right? And the other stuff that we're talking about. It was a very convincing push there from Augustana. Uh, it's very rare for a team in overtime to get past the second stage uh, of this map. So the fact that Augustana was able to do that in and of itself—that's really impressive, Bull Skunk. Now you look over on the side of St. Ambrose. They've got four minutes and thirty-six seconds here. That is a, as we said, hefty time bank. Is it hefty enough? I think it is. St. Ambrose showed us a bit of a lightning quickness last time they were on this map. If they can replicate that lightning quickness again, if they can get M7 in open space, if they can get Heinz hitting the big shots, I think they can burn their way through here. That is the absolute worst possible way to start, though. MM7 gets bodied by Dad. Yeah, speaking of big shots. Uh, and I mean, Vanilla Big Hog was doing a fantastic job of keeping MM7 in check for the most part. Uh, on that last push for Augustana. So, I mean, MM7 has to be really careful of this star-studded support line of Augustana College. 
who are currently sitting on high ground. Superb opt-in for the Diva here, so we're not getting the Sigma coming out of this defense. And as it arose, finds a little revenge for MM7, who is now back in this fight. And Augustana suddenly finding themselves down by two on point A. Looks like it's going to be another fast pickup here on their first point for the Vikings. Nice shooting, takes Weezer out of the fight. And St. Ambrose going to get through these double doors. I didn't really get a chance to mention it last time we saw the defense, but one choice that I don't quite like here, I do not like Weezer on the Hanzo. I don't think it's really born out much fruit. It was good for getting transcendence out of Azure Rose, but I think that there are other DPS choices in this situation that I might be a little bit more tempted to go with. If you're really trying to play a spam composition from range, I'd almost consider bringing a Junkrat to the party before I would consider bringing a Hanzo like this, especially just based off how the first run went. By the way, speaking of spam damage, Azure Rose on that Zenyatta has been an absolute menace and continues to be so, as does MM7, who nearly has a pulse bomb. Yeah, looking to follow up on this Gravitic Flux coming out of Sindri on. Yeah, doesn't even need it. Look, oh my goodness. Hines through the Ant Matrix with Discord Orbs, able to just clean up, clicking every head that appears on the screen. Body shots at least, hey, whatever, it's enough to get it done. Heralded by Ark and some beautiful halts. Oh, bad news starting to stack up here for Augustana because in this final push here, and I think they probably they might actually reach the door before a recontest comes in, but whether they do or not, Transcendence, Damage Amplifier, and the Zenyatta all, all online to cancel out the stuff that's being used here. Nice pulse to start things off. Even gets the Immortality filled out from Harbeckel before they drop. And those on the ground are met with death as St. Ambrose is just waiting for him. Beautiful start from MM7, kind of split the pack, and Augustana were forced to drop three than three, which St. Ambrose easily dealt with. Again, the Tracer is the difference maker, right? We've talked about it a couple of times. Beautiful play there from MM7 to dive across that gap, throw the Pulse Bomb in. That forces the, the Immortality Field out of Harvacle right away, and you still manage to hold on to your Transcendence throughout all, all, all that fight. The only ults really available to answer right now are Vanilla Big Hug with the Rally, which will come out just about now, and then the Beatdown Bongo. It's too invested early. Augustana need to find some value with these ultimates quickly. Uh, at least one pick. Here comes the third ult in. Uh, love the combo with Bob with Supercharger, and uh, it's the self-destruct that actually opens up the fight. So it cost quite a few ultimates, uh, five to be exact, but Augustana do stabilize. Yeah, I winced a little bit right there, and, and when I looked at what had happened, Augustana falling into one of these sort of, I would call it classic pitfalls of Overwatch. They used everything that they had to stop that push. They have nothing in the bank. They might get an amplification matrix. On the other side, though, at least three ults in the tank here for St. Ambrose, all of them capable of breaking the stalemate. Oh, and it's Hines through the Ant Matrix again! Proving why they were MVP of Fall, making a strong case for MVP here in Spring Ooh. as they take the Weezer! So get off my flank! I've got a Viper with your name on it, Weezer, as Hines continues to wreak havoc. That is a 5k if you include that DMEC on the Superb. And now St. Ambrose are able to post up on the back end of the Box of Victory. They've got the big Omnic Baller to work with. They've got a Gravitic Flux, and neither are even going to be necessary. St. Ambrose claw their way back into the Battle of the Rivers. They take map three. Hines the killer right there, the decisive player in that final matchup. And we said, Bullskunk, we were saying, watch out for Hines, right? Hines is good. He's a former MVP. He knows what's what. He's a good Rainbow Six Siege player as well. And he's showing it right there. Headshot after headshot jumps up to the top deck, hunts for the tracer, not the other way around, and finds it on the hip shot follow through right there. Beautiful stuff from Hines, who also had 29%. I don't know if you saw it right as it flashed there. 29% of the team's damage done could not ask for much more from your dps player right there to deliver in a critical scenario and get you back in this match uh i did not see that 29 percent because my eyes were focused on that thirty thousand healing coming out of sin fast <laughs> yeah. I saw that too and I mean again we've been talking about them for most of the night and I think that it's due credit right the support lineups for both of these teams have been really really good right they're enabling so much of this play and I yes, generally sir. think if you went and looked at the statistics on the other side of the board probably wouldn't be that far off from where Synfax was either yeah no I, I agree 100% 
Uh, it just it was a number that stood out to me. And, of course, it's going to happen when you have a 6-5 scoreline at the end of an escort. Uh, but still, still, come on. Like, those are big numbers. Yeah. And I agree. Oh, I mean, yeah. Harvacko and Vanilla Big Hug are putting up equal performance on the other side. Uh, I mean, Vanilla Big Hug really did a good job of keeping MM7 contained. But, unfortunately, once MM7 was contained, Heinz just decided to pop off and murder everybody on your team. So, you know, <laughs> you, got, you got halfway there. Uh, then the Dude. Ash took over. And boom, San Ambrose able to take one. We've got ourselves a serious quarterback. We do indeed. And I think the most fascinating aspect of that last fight was they didn't use any of the ults. They only used the amplification matrix. That right. was it. They still had three ults at the tail end of that. Heinz did almost all of that without the amplification matrix sort of I mean, the two headshots okay i'll give you the amplification matrix but that beautiful bit of play out there on the high ground to counteract weezer's tracer nothing nothing to it no yeah. ults no powered abilities just pure gun skill at that point in time it's really good stuff i mean we're going to new bonnie i really really wish i could tell you how i thought this was going to look uh and i just don't know because really the elements of a new bonnie attack and a defense right things like the range play, maybe an Arisa coming out, you know, maybe something more divey, the brawls that they've kind of been showing us. They've looked so even keel, the two teams on that. I don't think right. either one of their DPS is the superior Echo player, for example, if we saw an Echo player brought out here. I think Heinz has a slight edge in the Ash battle, but I don't think it's huge, right? Because there were some good plays coming out from the other side as well. Uh, and I don't think that Weezer versus MM7 has been particularly lopsided either. We both saw them okay. kind of have their moment in the sun there on that last map so i'm just not sure how this is going to play out i don't know but if heinz gets that high ground on defense on point a and get to sit back in that corner uncontested yeah st ambrose are going to be a really good spot <laughs> yeah it's scary but i mean it's also scary to have a giant angry you know gorilla from space uh drop on top of you with a nano boost and you know a, a zarya bubble or something up there on the high ground too so no matter how good you are as an ash some things cannot be uh just put down that easily so we'll see if that's the case here I, i'm I, like i'm genuinely and I, I sometimes say this as a bit of an exaggeration but in this case i am genuinely fascinated to see what these two teams choose to run here because i just have no idea what this is going to look like by the way, he's a scientist, okay? Not a gorilla. So you're, you're right. I'm sorry. He's a scientist. <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. And I, I should know better. He He's my favorite character. I should name I name my dog after him, so I should know. He's, he's, um, he's a scientist. He, he's one of the best characters in the game, just as far as from a character oh, yeah. creation standpoint, oh, personality great. and all that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's oh, yeah. awesome. And I love the personality of these two teams. These two teams have been absolutely on fire uh, and make me smile equally as much as a giant scientist eating peanut butter. <laughs> what do you make of this though this is an interesting thing and we're speaking of personalities here and i think we're seeing them come out a little bit augustana playing as something a little bit more maybe more kind of kind of oriented towards the supports a little bit more disengaging trying to, to wear things down through a little bit more coordinated play on the other side of the ball a very blunt and aggressive uh, attack here from saint ambrose that is a run in beat him up short of composition i don't know how it's going to fare against dad on farah i don't have a big sample size to pull from here but look at that anti-nade to start things off that's pretty scary let the ult charge begin here for the defenders yep harvack will uh appreciative for that free 25 percent that they've been able to build up there's another Jesus. one too oh my and look at the tanks the tanks from san ambrose oh so low uh trying to emerge and uh, mm7 got a little bit ahead of the tanks i think it's separated from the pack and san ambrose have to just sit at the bottom of hotel and wait for their cassidy to get back into the fight uh, Harvicle is a menace. Those grenades, man, that's Madman. that's nasty. They forced the immortality field out there as well, and they also forced the split. I believe it was Agent MM7 who got cut off, and this yep. full regroup, that's almost entirely courtesy of Harvicle hitting that second anti-nade so perfectly, but here they come again, and the anti-nade not as successful. Breaded man, tempted fate, <laughs> just sticking their nose in front of all of this damage. Ant Matrix out as St. Ambrose are desperate to try to find some space to work. They're able to pick up one, but everybody else is so far away. There's another huge Byronade out of Harveckle. Primal Rage was nanoed there for a bit. Now the barrage Ooh. is unleashed onto the pack, and St. Ambrose are struggling to find targets to pounce on. Anybody that gets close dies, sure, but nobody from Augustana have to get close to put in a world of hurt. 
but they've split them up here, Bullskunk. That's the big thing. They've split them up, yep. but the sound barrier has to come out now from Azure Rose to keep them in this fight. Weezer's just going to drop back into cover for half a second. Oh, no. Dad is down. Fortunately, the res will come in just in time. I mean, the sound barrier only hit as a Rose and Synfax. Ooh. Oh, there we go. That's an opener. That's what San Ambrose needed. Arc, well, Arc goes down. That does not sp speak well, but MM7 has absolutely carried this thing as they go uncontested off the high ground. And San Ambrose win this one in a scrappy, scrappy couple of engagements. Well, we were talking about the danger of Heinz on the high ground. We slept on MM7 on the high ground, making Clearly. huge plays up there on the Cassidy to rip that first point away. I also want to point out St. Ambrose played that so well, getting into cover as Agent MM7. A little bit of revenge served courtesy of Dad right there at the tail end of that fight. Uh, did not wait for that to go cold either. That is just some fresh, hot revenge right out of the oven. Now Dad has another barrage ready to go. He's circling in over the top, and Immortality Field is out. The barrage comes down. Self-destruct thrown in as well, and each find a kill. You also have the Nano to Monkey back there, so Augustana invests heavily to stop this cart, but they succeed. You need to stop it here, though. This is such a good place to kind of start, stop a team. The respawn advantage is obviously on the side of the defenders, but attacking around this corner into uh, a, a difficult defensive setup is really challenging. And I think we're going to see that illustrated. Shatter is perfect, though. Breaded Man did get that bubble out, so it didn't go past Breaded Man, and they had the primal range to get back oh! up and start wreaking havoc. As Synfax is sent into the great beyond, now MM7 is the focus of Brennan Man's fire. And St. Ambrose just have to retreat. They're going back to spawn one way or another. God, that corner is evil. I don't know what it is about this corner. I once got like a... S no, no, it was in six minutes. It was like a four-minute hold on this corner in overtime once. It's vicious to try and get out of this. And they're just going to play right up against this wall to minimize the amount of damage that St. Ambrose can really deliver the opposite direction. Deadeye hoping for the pharmacy, but doesn't get it this time. Brennan Man does get separated, though, as the Deadeye kind of forced everybody else back, and Brennan Man was left alone, which means the Nano Boost has to go on a Superb, which, by the way, Harveckel has on cooldown, apparently. How fast was that Nano Boost? Oh, and that there's the Death Blossom. That'll find both supports. I didn't see that one coming, and neither did the support line of Augustana. Well, I'll tell you what, if there's one theme of the night that we've seen, as much as we've hyped up, you know, all of these players, it is the DPS pulling uh, bacon out of a fire right there. And that's exactly what happened in that scenario. MM7 hitting another huge ult. Crispy indeed, my friend. MM7 hitting a huge ult right there to give them the room that they needed. It was a true, I mean, we say it often as a joke, but that was a true zoning ult right there. But look at this re-engage. No hesitation whatsoever. A couple with the self-destruct uh, allows room for Brennan. Brennan so close to dying. There's the primal rage. Superb able to get back in mech just in the nick of time. Nope, nope, never mind. We were looking at Sindrion, and uh, my brain went backwards. San Ambrose kept their eyes focused on the goal, though, as they pick up point B. Well, a difficult choice has to be made here, to be honest with you, Bullskunk. They, they're going to have to switch off this Farah, I think, soon. They're not getting enough value out of it. It's just not doing enough after this barrage i think you've got to switch to something you've got to get a different character in here i don't know what it is but i think they're gonna get shut down again oh, they are oh dad tried to counter with the barrage but mm7 is able to get that dead eye out just in time picks up half the squad now say to ambrose with eyes uh already on spawn like the cart's not even around the final corner so there's definitely time for a re-engage here and it looks like it's gonna be the swap to the may here for this final engagement coming off of that that far. Immortality field used from St. Ambrose as they keep the pressure right up on the doors. And Augustana are feeling it right now. Weezer doesn't have much more luck on the May than they did on the far. And St. Ambrose are able to take this fight at their tempo, how they want to play it. It's on their terms right now, Corbeck. It is, it is. They're rocketing back into this one here, Bull Skunk. And I'll be honest with you, the swap was just too late. Um, I think it should have come, I mean, honestly, it probably should have come after the first Deadeye, you know, cleared the sky, but certainly after the first, you know, second activation of the Cassidy-shaped SAM, I mean, that should have been it. No more uh, in that regard, but no, they waited a little bit too long, and it was that play at the end uh, from Agent MM7, uh, that was the critical play right there that just broke that defense wide open. Three kills off of a Deadeye, that close to the end of the map, there's no rallying back from that. There's no respawn 
respawn fast enough for your team to get out in any meaningful manner and credit to St. Ambrose as a whole following up on that extremely effectively. They never allowed Augustana the room to breathe after that alt had gone off. Well, that's what you get for trying to outdraw uh, Agent M7. Exactly. M7, you know, they're just, just too quick. Too quick on that trigger. <laughs> It's a gunslinger, man. What are you gonna do? Yeah, I gotta. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, like I appreciate. I appreciate Dad <laughs> trying to outdraw him. I mean, it looked really cool. Dad was clearly saw what was about to happen and was like, was, "All right, concussion rocket spin." Turned faster than any Farah has ever turned before, <laughs> and it just unfortunately was not fast enough because MM7 was waiting on the other end. Very interesting, by the way. Disparate defense kind of coming out here. You've got you know the shield kind of range presence of. Hines, but again, you're putting a lot of reliance on MM7 to be a constant nuisance in the back line, and I do not know how Dad is going to look stacked up against Hines on that Ash. That is a scary prospect. Especially with Sindrion on the Diva as well. Put a lot of pressure up in the skies and bounce back and forth between high grounds. Hines is sitting down here in the street, so not on the high ground where you might typically see them. And somehow Sinfax gets caught out, but both tanks down for Augustana is going to allow some time for Sinfax to get back into this thing. What did it cost? Everything. <laughs> it wasn't worth it, I don't think, on that one. Hines, by the way, doing a little bit of, uh, you know, aerial combat of their own right there, trying to drive back the uh, pharmacy and does so. Now we see a bit of a regroup. This is wisely done from Augustana. They're going to come back in again, but Hines is so deadly. I just, I do not rate, and as, and as much as I respect Dad's play, I just do not rate him in this particular matchup. Oh, I love this positioning, too. St. Ambrose are hiding under the bridge, just all bunched up here together. Uh, you've got Azuros there with the brag, so Weezer's going to struggle to close this gap. Weezer's just working on the point, uh, knowing they can't really go pursue this back line. Uh, waits for MM7, does get that kill. Nice Bionade makes Ark struggle as well. And it looks like Augustana, well, they're going to use their patience and a little bit of missiles here to finally unlock this point. I liked what San Ambrose were doing, but Augustana able to find the key to unlock it. It was patience. Uh, it was a bit of a double-edged sword. I mean, I, I I liked it too. It was a good sort of turtle up defense to try and deal with the threat of dad. The problem was, I think it really limited their strategic, uh, or I should say tactical flexibility. Because once they were underneath that bridge, they're not really on a con uh, composition that can push back out that aggressively. They don't have the tools for that. So they were kind of isolating themselves in that sector. And then eventually the, the prerogative is you have to step out from underneath the bridge. And when they finally put away the bridge troll act it didn't go so well i think i gave him some bonus points for originality on that one. Oh yeah uh you know it was, it was creative right now augustana just slowing down waiting for heinz's bob to get off the battlefield weezer does have this pulse bomb to work with it is going around into the back guess what mm7 had one too and <laughs> weezer's get gobbled up centurions all over that mm7 picks up another as they have proved to be the prevailing tracer once again here on Numbani. Shout out to the unsung heroism of Cedrion right there. Again, another great impactful eat from Cedrion, because if that pulse bomb had hit, that would have been absolutely devastating given where they were. This oh, yeah. is going to force a bit of a soft regroup here from Augustana as they consider the best way to go about this, but now they've got Superb's Graviton online as well. Got one gets eaten too! Oh, but it's not going to matter at the end of the day. Dad and Harveckle are able to win it out in the neutral, uh, despite the best efforts of Sindrion on the D.Va. Uh, intelligent as that play was, unfortunately, Augustana's attack was just overwhelming force. Man, I said at the you know first map, I was like, Augustana, they're hungry, but clearly the hungriest player in the lobby is Hungry Hungry Sentry on there, on that D.Va, who's just eaten... What is that like? One, two, three, four, maybe the sixth or seventh ult. I think we've seen Sentry on eat so far tonight. Nom, nom, nom. It's, it's nom, 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 man. It's, a, it's an all-you-can-eat buffet out there for Sentry on. Hey, Matrix now up. Just slowing down play a little bit. Uh, Azure Rose coming up on a rally. Could be quite impactful. Oh, nice halt. And that's going to oh. find three. What a play coming out from St. Ambrose. Uh, and their quest to reverse sweep the Battle of the River. Their coordination on point here. They've really found their rhythm in the back half of this series. 
Well, if you can't eat your enemies' ults, eat your enemies instead. <laughs> That's what Cendrion <laughs> does right there. Let's the bomb fly. Perfectly coordinated pull there from Ark. And I don't know, man. Maybe they got a little chat during that break that we had, the five minutes or whatever, because they really seem to have leveled out pretty well on these last two maps. And it's revitalized St. Ambrose that we're looking at here on the tail end Whoa. of Ubani Dad trying to make a difference. Even with the nano boost, only able to get one. The DM got the rest of it. St. Ambrose trying to stabilize here, using that rally to do so, but they're out of ultimates otherwise. As the Bob is able to pick up Superb. Might slow down this attack just enough for reinforcements to show up. No, they can't deny the res, and Superb is back in the battle. Augustana with a full steam ahead approach, using the Graviton Surge here to clean up whatever was left. And Augustana could put up an even better time bank than that of the Fighting Bees. Oh no, did we curse them? <laughs> I'm not sure. Have. I think we we might, we might have. have. We were like, yeah, go on, go St. Ambrose, go. And then all of a sudden, Augustana was like, no, nope, no, nope, let's just shut this down. And uh, that's exactly what happened. I mean, just a cutting level of pressure that was applied there from Augustana. I want you to think in particular back to the perspective of Heinz. So Heinz is supposed to be the damage dealer hanging back behind the line, right? This is what Ash is supposed to do in this setup. You saw Heinz desperately trying to find an account for targets. That's how many different angles they were getting from. They had the tracer coming from one side. I think somebody was damaging him from the backside as well. You had the main body coming forward. Couldn't even see the supports who were playing relatively open just because there were such a dearth of targets in so many different areas. And it's really hard to focus your fire in that situation. And it just didn't happen for St. Ambrose right there. And I think that was a key contributing factor of what allowed Augustan to punch their way through. And we were talking about that if St. Ambrose were going to take this map, I mean, it's going to be on the back of these DPS and Heinz in particular with how well this map favors these long range uh, flick scans and now going on to, well, showing us a Hanzo here. Still some time to change their mind on that. Augustana respond beautifully. Like they're they are able to control that. And big props yeah. to, to just their playbook for, for being able to turn the heads like that and draw the eye level in so many different directions that Heinz doesn't know which way to look, or at least is struggling to lock down targets is probably more accurate. Struggling to lock down those kills. Yeah. A very poised response, I think, is the best way to yeah. put it from Augustana. I think a lot of teams would have gotten very frustrated there and maybe cracked a little bit under the pressure. Not so. Augustana sticking to their guns. They're not going to give this opportunity up. San Ambrose and through bottom floor hotel. Hines already under a lot of pressure. Needs to find some room to work for this Hanzo. Gonna go up to the high ground and make it happen. Has a mercy in their sights. Can't land that one. Decides to drop back down because Agent MM7's in trouble. You've got Weezer trying to come in from that left hand. Many work behind, but guess what? Sinfax already has the Ant Matrix and Dad gets taken out of their barrage. Harveckle trying to keep Superb and the rest of Augustana alive, but MM7 and Hines will not be denied on this tank. I say that! Superb is somehow with one hit point! Serum takes Hines out of the fight. Unbelievable! Ezra Rose has to use this sound barrier to even try to get back, but there is a pulse bomb from Weezer. And Augustana managed to stay in this thing through some fantastic play from Superb and Harveckle. The supports! It's Harveckle! The supports, man. mercy! Saving the day! Quite literally! Saving the day right there. I don't know how Superb managed to stay alive either, but an absolute miracle level moment right there for the side of Augustana. You'd love to see it. And now St. Ambrose, they've got two ults here in the tank. They've got two big ults. They've got MM7's absolutely devastating high noon, and they have Hines with the dragon. That is enough for them to win this fight. We've seen them do it with less. Are they going to be able to do it here? MM7 Taking down the pharmacy with this dead eye in the past. Breaded man already low. And now Sen doesn't even need the ultimate to take dad out of the sky, but they have to deny the res. Keep a check on vanilla big hug. You can see Vanilla Big Hug very low at the top of your screen. Super B uses that self-destruct to get back in met, and Weezer's able to pick up one! The Baptiste <gasps> is down! Hines goes down! This has suddenly turned from a favorable fight against St. Ambrose. Arc on the Reinhardt, still in this thing, still swinging for dear life, and Cendrion's able to pick up one as well, despite losing their Baptiste. St. Ambrose have some presence, they've got some purchase on this point, and now they're on the road. And they held on to the Deadeye! 
They held on to the Deadeye throughout. Absolutely crazy that they were able to do that. I'm just going to tack on a note here. Breaded Man waited so long to use that Primal Rage. I actually think that was a bit of a miscalculation. He should have just popped it for the heals, honestly, Bullskunk, because it forced healing to have to be redirected to him during that fight, which pulled it away from other more vulnerable targets. But here we go. Overtime cooking for St. Ambrose Esports. They cannot leave the cart. Can Augustana die? Divest them of that cargo. Oh, huge bio nade. Zero has to use that sound barrier just to counteract it. Weezer is nanoed in the back, but eats a flashbang as MM7 finally takes them down and devalues that entirely and then takes down Dad for a second time. Back to back. Dad got killed, rezzed, and killed once again. Dow not allowed to play the game because Agent MM7 has this Peacekeeper on lock. It is absolute perfection coming out of this DPS squad from St. Ambrose. There's another one. Arbuckle down early on. That's a huge source of healing. Vanilla Big Hunt cannot do this alone. And you'll see those red names starting to pop up more and more positively in the kill feed. Oh, no. Dad tries to touch with the delay. And we're getting another rip-roaring overtime session here from these two teams. Except it's St. Ambrose again powering forward. The bees continue to fight. As your hometown squad there in Davenport now have eyes set on a sixth point to put on the board they've got ults to work with and they've got the opening pick weezer goes down mm7 with the dead eye doesn't even need it hines steals the kills hines gets three in a row on the newly swapped 76 and there's still plenty in the bank for them to take this thing home Dad switch, dad switch. Honestly, it's a double hit scan. There it is. Okay, coming out on the McCree instead. Hopefully not too late like last time. They still got superb with the Diva Bomb here. They can probably make something out of it. No, that's it. the worst use. Oh, but MM7 what? goes down. And dad picks up two. Hines is able to get two with attack visor as well. But bearded, breaded man is on this point. Nano boosted with a hammer swinging away. And the defense might just hold the last second, particularly with another great bionade coming out of Harveckle. And St. Ambrose will fall short of their sixth point, but you should be celebrating there for the Bees fans in Iowa because this was a monstrous push in OT, and it's going to be a tough one to answer. St. Ambrose have set the bar, and now it's up to Augustana to respond. Well, the end of bees may come, but it will not be this map. I'll tell you that right now. No depollinization happening here on the St. Ambrose Esports Watch. That's for sure. Beautiful play for them throughout that overtime. Very oppressive in the way that they applied their aggressive uh, aggression. And the two big stars right there, the DPS yet again. Hines, Agent MM7 coming in huge when it was needed of them, making the big plays. The, uh, the Cassidy from MM7 has been amazing. I I mean, it really has been a revelation. We haven't seen that coming out of MM7 throughout much of this. Really solid. Hines right there with him. Uh, that Soldier 76 swap at the end, absolutely critical. And if that bomb hadn't been quite as successful as it was for whatever reason catching mm7 off guard i think we would be quite easily staring down the barrel of that six points because they wouldn't have been able to apply the pressure to Hines there to slow it down they're on the defense they're running the double hit scan back into it dad is starting off on the far here jeff can't happen you gotta switch off of it you cannot run it into these two it will not work yeah i don't see how it would uh, i mean that way there's no way that, yeah, there, there's just no way. I mean, you're, you're talking about like a no death run in Elden Ring. Like, it's just impossible. Yep. Like, well, somebody did do that, actually. 45 minutes. I, oh, um, right. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. I, okay, it is nay impossible. It all is right? nay and, impossible. And right now, right now, you need to play the odds, okay? You don't run into this match right here with only a 1% chance of success. And, I mean, I don't know if it's quite that low, but the odds are stacked against Dad trying to take to the skies against these two outstanding DPS, MM7 and Hines. They're distracted. They're in the back line right now chasing Monkey. I don't know what happened. Everything got split up, and Dad now has a bit of free reign. But I think the skies are about to become a lot more cloudy up there for poor Farah. And St. Ambrose are taken to this same spot. They're, <gasps> they're, they're playing the trolls under the bridge, and Harbuckle takes down Ark. Oh, that's a disastrous start. Breaded Man has the benefit of a res there. No such luck for the Orisa of St. Ambrose. Now they're on the back foot. They're purple. They're retreating to the next corner while Augustana captures point A. 
Are they going to recontest, though? That's the question. No, no they're, they're gonna not. They're corner. just going to give it up. Okay, defense in depth. Yeah. That's what we're talking about right here. As Dad peeks that corner, that's a brave decision to be made right there. By the way, just to point out synergy, it's something that we've talked about. You saw it right there. The level of trust exhibited by Breaded Man to engage like that right into the teeth of the enemy team and just know that his supports were going to keep him alive. That's the kind of synergy that we're talking about right there. A lot of tank players wouldn't have done that. Unfortunately, Superb is down. That'll be the res out early, but this fight is far from over. I'd also like to mention that somehow Dad made that work. Despite all of our expectations, Dad has Barrage ready to go. Still now. putting some pressure down. Uh, I mean, has to play really safe to get the Nano. They're going to try to Barrage, but... Sindrion yet devaluing yet another ultimate in this game, and Dad gets picked out of the sky. That is a bit more of what we expected that to look like. But Weezer! Whoa! Holy cow! Weezer sneaks in and pulse bombs three. He gets the follow-up kill into Sindrion as well. And Weezer has pressed Augustana all the way over the line. There, that was Pinkerton right there. That's the album that we wanted to see coming out of Weezer. <laughs> Perfectly executed. <laughs> Amazing! Every song, a banger. The kind of thing that you listen to El Scorcho over and over again because you're a teenager and you relate to it. It's great. It's perfect. Oh, Unfortunately, like though... Here. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, St. Ambrose has the significant ult advantage going into this last stage. Only 30 seconds left on the clock, and they have both DPS ults and the tank ults. They could wipe And Harvickle's down! Oh, oh that is no. a terrible start. Vanilla Big Hug. Oh, he does manage to sneak around the self-destruct to go get that res, but here comes the Graviton Surge. Superb does that. I think that got hit on the cart. I don't think that's what they were looking for. St. Amber is now choosing to fight back with their ultimates. It's going to be a double damage amplification matrix. Tack Visor on the back of it, picking up three, and there is just no coming back from that. Augustana cannot stand up against this absolute onslaught of ultimates. St. Ambrose, they're sending us to a map five. Battle of the River comes down to one final control map. You're at your drive through you know, your favorite drive through restaurant. They're like, do you want ketchup? And you're like, yeah, I'll have some ketchup. And then they just dump like 80 ketchup packets into a bag and hand them to you. That's what <laughs> happened right there with Heinz. He's just like all the ketchup. The bottle is open. It's coming out easy, like a beautiful pale end. And again, the thing that I said earlier on, and we're seeing it illustrated in this play of the game, the DPS saving the bacon of the team. I said they had the ults to wipe the point there, Bull Skunk. They had the ults to wipe the point. It came in the form of Heinz. Give credit to the cast that was around them for making it happen but ultimately it was the dps players in the hot seat doing what they needed to do to secure that last point of Nimani. yeah and heinz and mm7 certainly have the chops to make the pops they get the job done they send us to map five holy cow what a comeback whatever that pep talk from coach erica at halftime it has worked <laughs> And there is one map to decide us all. We're going to take a quick break before we send it there. When we return, it is Busan. We'll see you in a moment. Oh, my goodness. What an absolutely fun match we have here at the Battle of the River. I hope our players are having as good a time up in Davenport, Iowa, on the land there at the St. Ambrose campus. It's uh, St. Ambrose. Man, they have really shown their mettle and their resilience. They put up two 6-5 victories back-to-back -to, -back to send us to this map five. Yeah, we were just talking about this in the break. Momentum very much in the court of St. Ambrose here. They probably got the home crowd. If there is a home crowd, uh, they're riled up, right? The, the pizza's probably gone, so nerves are starting to fray as well. On that <laughs> front, everybody's getting eager and excited to see how this ends. But they've got those two six fives in the bag. And I mean, as someone who played at a similar level to this, I know that if I was in the position of just having lost two six fives, which is what uh, Augustana is in, I would be unhappy. Uh, I also have a terrible right. mental, but I would be unhappy. The thing is, though, if you're sitting on the side of Augustana, you got to take a little bit of comfort in the fact that last time you guys were on a cough map, it was close, but it wasn't that close. You had the superior ult execution. You had the superior coordination coming out of the gate. Koth looked a lot more favorable to that Augustana side when push came to shove than it did for the St. Ambrose side. So now if we're going to see them come out here on those shadow dives again, I think that the it's a tough call, but I think that Augustana might have a little bit of an edge. So we'll be revealed in about 20 seconds. And, and I think if it's more of a brawl, though, I'm going to I'm going to give it towards St. Ambrose. Yeah, it's the precedent of Augustana winning 2-0 on Ilios versus the yeah. momentum that St. Ambrose have put together uh, after the halftime. They've looked like an entirely different squad. And 
you know, this, it's certainly a brawl favored sub map here on Mecha Base. And it looks mm. like a little bit of Ice Queen coming out of both sides. Mm. This is going to be interesting. Uh, this, this, this first gonna fight is going to mean a lot. This first fight it is, is going to mean a lot. It has it has the all the tenor of a kind of decisive moment right at the very beginning. Dad has looked like an excellent Symmetra player. I'm just going to throw that out oh, there yeah. right now. Oh, yeah. Has looked spectacular. Weezer yes. has been above average too on that May. This looks more like King's Row in a lot of ways. And again, King's Row was a favorable map for Augustana. So here we go. Fight number one. And the battle for the high ground, as you might anticipate, Sindrion already low and an immortality field already used out of Synfax. This is an edge to Augustana and cooldowns on this fight, but it's Weezer who draws first blood. And, uh, well, uh, yeah, D Dad moves in to follow up on it, and it was just an, uh, the created from some early opportunities. Augustana do a great job of following up on it. Look at Dad on that sim, already just putting down the law. Oh, that's a that's a stern talking to from dad again sits uh sits saint ambrose down on the knee and gives him a little chat about something important brutal but again we're gonna see this fast tempo these re-engages are gonna come quickly this is exactly like what we saw in ilios as well nice wall splitting things off and heinz goes down immediately early advantage to augustana is they're able to just hold up on that top wall Dad's going to go ahead and throw it down. This photon barrier as the two Reinhardts go face-to-face, -face, shield to oh! shield, but it's the early Earth Shatter that comes out from Brennan Man. And Ark finds themselves back in spawn. Dad racking up kills again. Make it three for Dad in this fight as well. And you aren't kidding. Oh, my goodness. Dad on this sim is just scary. That is that is a six-foot-six six gaming warlord of a dad. It is. It is. It's it's a, it's a, the kind of dad that you're never going to be able to live up to. It's the kind of dad that causes right. issues at a later stage in life. That's insane. Um, I will just point <laughs> out, by the way, I I want to I want to highlight one more thing. When dad got booped off, immediately deployed the fo the, the shield. Brilliant timing. Knew that they weren't going to be able there to pr provide the damage, so provided sustain instead. Couldn't ask for anything more. Nice quick response from St. Ambrose as they look to come out from the top ropes and MM7 invests the blizzard. There's a no. self-struck going in the back and oh! Hines gets themselves caught out. Thought they were safe. Immortality field has been used and St. Ambrose kind of have their backs up against the wall here. MM7 getting pressured down. Ant Matrix just holding St. Ambrose in place. They have to use a sound barrier just to try to escape out of that corner. But there's no respite to be found. There no, is no safety no. for you. This is 86% to zero. And St. Ambrose are going to be desperate just to get one touch in. Why did they use the cell barrier? Ah, just just jump off the edge of the map, reset. Now you're not even, I don't think you're going to get a chance to retouch this. Ark! Oh, oh, maybe. Oh, there, there's the script being flipped, but it's three the other way. And it's a plus one to August Stana in this 99 to zero fight. The May has to touch. Sindrion does have the self-destruct to get back in mech, buy another 600 health. Uh... But that doesn't mean a whole wow. lot. You can't call the second mech in or you don't get back to the, the objective is really what happened on that. It's a clean 100 to zero to Augustana. Wow. That momentum. We were talking about momentum. Uh, and I think the momentum just got forcibly stopped right there. I don't know what the appropriate metaphor or simile is in this situation. It was just kind of like a wave hitting a dam. Nothing happened. It, it died 100% to zero on that first map. And now we're coming out with Augustana on the shadow dive, the composition that they looked very deadly on. St. Ambrose is going to try and challenge this with a Reinhardt Reaper, very brawly McCree comp. This is going to be tough because I don't know if you have the sustain and the ability to counteract dad's hacks. That's going to be the big thing as they fight around Drum Jr. Well, when you're talking about Dad Symmetra, Dad Sombra, to me, was even more impressive somehow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The EMPs, every single one was fight winning, and they're already a quarter to the first one here as both main tanks fall. Hines is able to pick up that go-ahead kill, though, and give the edge on over to St. Ambrose, and the Fighting Bees should be able to grab first control, particularly with that kill on the Harveckle. 
That's a self-inflicted defeat right there for Augustana. They split their front line, and that allowed Hines to just, like, drive in there, dagger to a kidney sort of situation, and split the two of them up. What that has done, though, is it's made uh, Augustana switch things up. They're going in with a Reinhardt and a May now, trying to copy some of the magic that they had on the last stage. And Already they found behind it. Behind an economy. This Brennan man just gets charged into oblivion. Uh, and everybody ends up dead, so there's no more Reinhardts on the battlefield. Early Ant Matrix, and St. Ambrose are content to just hold the line at the moment and wait for the ingress. Dad, happy to oblige, coming in back on that Symmetra. Self-Destruct picks up one, Hines picks up another as the battle around Drum continues. Main tanks refer return to the fight. As their Rose goes down, St. Ambrose just lost their sound barrier in this engagement. Could have been the difference maker, but alas, it's Augustana oh. flipping this point. They're doing a good job of stalling it out. I'll give them credit for that, but it's not quite enough. They do hit 50%. Again, though, Augustana, uh, you know, at the Battle of Waterloo, the, the Archduke Wellington said at the end that it was a damn near-run thing, and it was right there as well because Augustana got split up once again. St. Ambrose wasn't able to capitalize on it that time, whether it was because of a Maywall or what, I don't know, but they've got to be very careful about splitting up in such a brawl-focused composition. Ant Matrix out. Shatter. Ark has made it to get around him, and as the rest of the team, Ark does throw down the Shatter, but doesn't get anything with it, and now goes down. Sound Barrier invested from both sides. And Augustana are cleaning up their flanks, now pushing in to force back the main ranks. But oh! here comes Hines in with the Death Blossom. That picks up one, does a ton of damage, able to follow up with two more. And Hines answers back. St. Ambrose steal this objective. The DPS again, Bullskunk coming in to save the day. This is what they've been relying on this entire time. Sometimes it's MM7, sometimes it's Heinz, whichever one of them steps up in a big way in critical moments. Augustana, rapid recontest and ult usage here is the key to victory for them. If they can just stick this fight early and stick it hard, they'll probably take this back. Photon Barrier used early. Amplification Matrix invested early as well from St. Ambrose. Shatter manages to sneak around the corner, but the immortality is there, and St. Ambrose are able to retreat back to the objective, forcing Augustana to use ults to even approach. Now they're throwing in the third as Augustana's Ant Matrix is all the way in the back. Self-destruct throwing in. Blizzard as well. Augustana empty the entire war chest. They are rewarded with the objective. The question is, do they have enough to hang on to it? Superb, though. Big play there. We haven't seen a ton of Superb. He's been hanging at a similar level to Sendrion, but the plays haven't been as flashy. Speaking of Sendrion, getting absolutely bullied here. But the plays haven't been as flashy. Finally, a huge moment for Superb right there to make a big difference. Nasty stagger there as well. But take a look at the percentages, Jeff. That's the big thing here. This is one fight territory for both of these teams. St. Ambrose has two ults in the bank. They're both been very impactful impactful ults throughout this matchup. Augustana has nothing to respond to that with. This is going to be an absolutely crucial fight. Augustana just need to hang on a little bit longer. They'll take home that aura victory. Sindrion throws in an opening self-destruct. Shield is there. Augustana able to respond with a kill of their own as the Zer Rose goes down, but Orc comes in with the shatter. Trying to fight some revenge for their fallen Lucio friend and St. Ambrose strike back. They will flip this thing over. They're going to have some ults in the bank to work with to hang on to it. The contestation still coming through. We'll get Augustana to 99, but St. Ambrose inevitably take the point. I don't think anybody's going to be able... Will somebody be able to touch? They're not going to get a full re-engage here. They'll get enough bodies that they will try and re-engage. They've got five in. They can make something out of this. Harbuckle's going to throw down the Ant Matrix. Zero's sound barrier hits all six. St. Hey, Ambrose, try to circle around, and it's dancing around the point right now. Shatter comes through, and Azur Rose goes down. Vanilla Big Hug able to pick up that final blow. Dad gets one as well. Dad gets two. And the Symmetra shows up big just when Augustana needed it most. They had never been able to conquer the Fighting Bees, and it looks like today is the day. It took a land to make it happen, but the Battle of the River firmly in the hands of the Vikings right now. Augustana traverse the Mississippi they traverse the incredible DPS of St. Ambrose University and their synergy serves them well, rising out on top as they raise the aura of victory above their heads in celebration. Wow. Could you ask for anything better?
uh, for a land match between rivals all the way to map number five high octane action from both sides beautiful stuff uh, it's just amazing you know what i actually should extend my heartfelt thanks uh, to both of these teams. This is good. You're like, I will say, I have been so down on Overwatch lately. I think a lot of people have been down on Overwatch. It has become a bit of a slog. A match like this is a beautiful reminder of how exciting and entertaining and engaging and thrilling a game like this could be. This literally makes me like the game again. So thank you on a personal level to both of the colleges for putting on such an exciting and entertaining match. I, I, it's amazing. It was really, really good. One of the best games of Overwatch I think I've ever watched, <laughs> truth be told. Uh, I, I I don't even have much to follow up with that. That that was absolutely poignant, and uh, I agree 100% with all of it. Uh, a big shout-out and thank you to both of our teams. Uh, a big thank you to St. Ambrose for hosting that LAN. I hope everybody had a good time. Augustana celebrating their first victory over the Fighting Bees, and I'm sure they're happy about it, but hopefully everybody can... I mean, it's GG's, and everybody gets to hang out and, and just enjoy enjoy being around some fellow competitors, some fellow Overwatch enthusiasts, because uh, in the, at the end of the day, we're all of this together. Um, and man, there's something to be said for reigniting that passion for the game. That That is such a beautiful thing. And these two squads have done it in spades. And well, frankly, I think we're just going to leave you with that. A beautiful match, but we're not done. We're going to take a little bit of break. We're going to get set up for the next one. We've got the Toros taking on the Serpents. When we return, more NECC to come.